Now, if you haven't been here before, my name is Sharon. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm a florist and I love everything to do with flowers. I'm based in South Wales in the United Kingdom and here I teach workshops and classes on how to arrange beautiful flowers as well as supply many, many brides with their gorgeous wedding flowers. Now today I'm going to look at a hand-tied bouquet. I get requested for this an awful lot and one of the reasons that I've never done it before is because well, several reasons. There is more than one type of hand tie. Everybody assumes that you learn one method and off you go and you can create any type of hand tie. There are several different ways to make a hand tie bouquet. It could be for a bride, it could be to sit in a vase, it could be something that you give as a gift. It might be something that you give to somebody as a presentation item when they're on stage. They could have won the competition, they could be being elected as the local mayor. And all those different hand tides have a different method. Now the style I'm doing today is one that will be ideal to sit in your vase at home. So often if you buy flowers from a supermarket, you might have been given them as a gift from friends or family, or you might have items from your garden. Now today's selection have come from a local flower farm these are from Patalica, which is a local flower farm very close to me. So they're all organically grown and they come from within a sort of two, three mile radius from where I am now. And hand tying the flowers makes them look far more presentable in a vase. I'm going to do it as an all round design so you can see the flowers from all directions. But hand tides can also be front facing. Now you need a few basic equipment, flowers, and if you've got foliage, that works really well as well. And you're going to need something to tie the flowers into position. And today, because my flowers are locally grown and they're organic and it's a sustainable option that could easily be composted at home, I'm going to use some natural string. No single use plastics, nothing that isn't going to break down naturally in the environment. So what have we got? I'm going to talk you through the different flower types as we go along. For this type of design, you could use a supermarket bunch or several supermarket bunches that you might have collected while you're doing your weekly shop. For today, I'm just using these beautiful garden grown flowers. Aren't they amazing? Dark, dark burgundy red. And as I go through each selection of flowers, I'll talk through with you exactly what they are. So as I've already explained, there's more than one method, but what we're going to look at today is the spiral stem. So we're going to hopefully have a beautifully spiral stem at the base of our design, and that will help it sit in my vase more effectively. So I'm starting with what I'm going to refer to as my center flower, and it's this gorgeous dark burgundy dahlia. And then just to get it started, I'm going to add some more flowers into this center section here. So that one is an Achillea, gorgeous yellow color. And this one, one of my favorites is the Panicum or the Fountain Grass. It gives a gorgeous softness and a beautiful light and airy feel to the design. And the first couple of placements that I'm adding in are all going to be fairly straight. Don't panic at the moment about getting this cross section. Sometimes it's referred to as an X. So at the moment, my hand is quite close together and these few flowers that I've added in the middle are straight down. They're almost what we would refer to as parallel stems. So they're alongside one another. Now I've got a little bit of material in the middle. I have a bit of a core section and that could be foliage. Now I can start to do that rotation. I've picked a very seasonal color combination. So it's, we're in the autumn here in the UK. So I've gone with reds, browns, and oranges. And I'm just going to arrange them quite naturally without worrying about the color distribution. Right, okay, so now I have this center section. I'm going to introduce um, a little bit of wheat. So this is dried wheat. But again, I feel it's very synonymous with the autumn here. I'm going to get a bunch of sort of three or four stems. I'm going to start that spiraling effect on the bottom. So if we look at the bouquet from what at the moment is the front, I'm going to come across my bouquet, starting to create this spiraled effect. And hopefully you can see I'm coming from left to right across 
the center section. So now I'm going to spiral the book or turn the bouquet I should say. If I was working on this myself then this lovely echinacea here is facing me. I would refer to that as the front. What I'm almost going to do is turn it a quarter style so it's now facing towards my right hand side. So I've gone from this position which would be the front to the right and that's the simple method of creating a hand tie. Add in at the front so let's look for something that has a different colour and a different texture. I'm going to add it in at the front and then I'm going to rotate. And when you rotate, you have to be careful that you don't slacken off your hand too much and the flowers at the top slip and slide and move. We'll continue turning that bouquet around and add in a different flower in at the time. Now this one, this is a lovely amaranthus and it's got quite a strong shape to it. It's bending over. So I'm not going to put that in. I'm going to use that on the edge because I think it'll suit the outside of my design. So I'm going to look for something now that I haven't used that has a lovely shape and texture and I can add this in at the front and I'm going to turn it slightly. And what we are doing is continually turning that bouquet around. When you become more proficient in hand-tied bouquets, you won't need to rotate the actual bouquet around. You'll be able to add in from a different position. But for beginners, this is often the best way to start. Okay, so now I've rotated and I'm going to add in something else here at the front and I'm going to rotate it anti-clockwise. It doesn't matter which way you go, you can go clockwise. If you naturally turn anti-clockwise like I do, go that way. If you turn clockwise and that's okay as well. What you must remember to do is to keep turning in the same direction all the time. And now you will see how that spiral base is coming together without too much effort. Add in at the front, turn to the side and try to distribute the colour and the texture of the flowers and create this very natural country style bouquet. Now what I've decided to do with the hand tied bouquet because I think it's a really essential part of floristry is I'm going to do an online course. I think it's going to be five weeks because I feel that there are five quite distinct designs you can learn to do in a hand tie. I'm also going to look at a gift bouquet, so one that you would wrap and you would give as a present to somebody. And oh, there were five altogether, and now I've forgotten the. It might be a parallel style hand tie, which is often given as presentation. Now, if you want to participate, you'll find a link below that will give you all the information that you need. Okay, so this is how my hand tie is coming together so far. I've got, I think, quite a fairly even distribution of the stronger yellow colour that's in the bouquet. But I'm going to keep on going, adding in the different textures and the different flowers that I've got. I'm still rotating. I'm still trying to spread out the different colours and the different textures in the bouquet. What I've also got is a helichrysum or a straw flower. And you'll see with these that these also have that shape where they're slightly bent and these sit better on the outside. So I'm going to leave those to add in towards the outside of my bouquet. Now you'll see that I'm loosening my hand and I'm opening it wider every time I add a different flower. But I haven't moved from that same position that I started the bouquet with. If we compare it to my vase, it's still the same size in relation to my vase. Now we're going to look at adding the remainder of my flowers. Add it towards the front. Whoop, let's just do that one. Just want to turn that slightly. Now what you will see me doing at the moment is slightly adjusting the flowers that I've already got in. I stopped putting in this orange dahlia because it's very close to the same colour dahlia there. 
So what I'm now going to look to do is to add in something that's got a different colour and a different flower shape. So we've got lots of variations in the colours and textures. I'm adding it in at the front, but I'm not putting it in this flat position here. I'm adding it in at that angled position. So we really, really emphasise this cross section here. And I'm going to keep on going, adding in towards the front. Now I feel that this dahlia here has slightly dropped down, so I'm going to loosen my hand off at the base and slightly raise it upwards. Again, if I'm looking at it from this position, I feel that I need some more of the dried wheat towards this front section here. So I'm going to add that in next in the front section and then I'm going to keep rotating and adding in the different materials. Now this quite informal style, this is what I would refer to as an informal bouquet because I'm not trying to get any structure or any pattern on the top of my design. So it's not formally arranged. This is probably the easiest style to do when you're learning. Just concentrate on working on that spiraled base. Isn't that fabulous? Once you master it, you'll be able to create so many different designs and you almost have a little bit of a hallelujah moment. You'll practice and you'll practice and you'll practice and then one day it will really easily fall into place and you'll, you'll wonder why you've been worrying so long about creating the design. Okay, so we're nearly coming to the end of my main flowers. I've got a lovely distribution of all the different colours and textures. It's a really, really pretty design. That's better, isn't that lovely? That one is snapped, so I just need to put it in lower down. It's now starting to become a little bit uncomfortable for me to hold. So when you get to that stage at home, you probably will need to stop until you have a little bit more experience and a bit more practice. And don't over strain your hand because then you will get cramp and it'll feel quite uncomfortable. So when you get to the position where you can't add any more flowers in comfortably, I would suggest you stop. Now, I'm just gonna go back right to the very beginning because there's one important bit of information that I forgot to mention, and that is that you need to remove all of the foliage from below the tying point before you start. Then don't cut corners, get that prepared really well before you start, and then you don't have to worry about doing it as you're creating the bouquet. Now I use this lovely jute string, and I'm going to go around, oops, it's a bit difficult to show on camera. I'm going to go around several times, lifting my finger as I go so that I'm getting right underneath. If you don't tie tight enough, then your bouquet is gonna fall apart. If you tie too tight, you're going to squash your stems. So I've now lowered the camera down so you get a much better position of how I'm tying and I, how I'm holding that bouquet into place. And I'm, I just simply tie this into a double knot. There are lots of different ways of doing it. There are some lots of very clever ways of tying. But for me, with years of experience, that is all I need to do. I've cut the excess string off quite short, so they're not going to dangle in the water and then contaminate my fresh, clean water. So our next step would be to cut our stem ends the same, roughly the same length as our vase. Okay, so when I'm quite happy that they are all cut to a similar length, I can put them back in my vase. Now we're always told, we're always taught that hand tied should stand up. And that's really only relevant if you're gift wrapping and you're placing a water bubble at the bottom. If it's standing in the vase for support, then that isn't as important as when you're arranging it in a cellophane wrap. So now I've removed that extra little bit of stems from the bottom, it sits perfectly in my vase. Now I think I've created a really gorgeous autumnal hand tie. I hope you've enjoyed. Don't forget if you want to participate in the online course then there will be some details linked below in the description box. I will also write a list of all the materials that I've used today. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel then please do so. Hit that notification bell if you want to know when I upload my next tutorial 
and if you want to join me for that five-week course then the information is below. See you all very soon. Bye for now. <laughs>